I tend not to get too much into my past, but you know, I, I grew up in Hawaii and I lived in this little town on the east side of Maui and uh, I was a pretty precocious kid. Uh, I loved reading and um, I was homeschooled for uh, my, my K through 12 years and it allowed me to graduate quite early uh, from high school. And uh, I had a normal, happy childhood. My dad was a doctor and uh, his brother's a doctor. My grandfather was uh, OBGYN. He delivered thousands of kids over his career, including me. Uh, and uh, on my other side of my, my mom's side, my grandfather there was a lineman. He worked in the cable business and worked his way all the way up to being an executive at a cable company. And he did. He got a bunch of patents and uh, he was a pretty bright guy, but he only went to high school and he fought in the Korean War. He was in Marine Demolitions. And he was such a humble guy that uh, he got a bunch of medals in the war. We didn't even know about it until 50 years later, we were cleaning out his basement. We found him in a box, he never told us. Uh, so they got some great family members and I had a great childhood. Uh, but it's a standard normal childhood that a lot of us have in life. Nothing special about me. Uh, you know, I, I, everybody's always looking for the story behind people to say, well, what, what was the thing? Or how, how did, when, when did this person demonstrate greatness? And, you know, I, I look to history and you look at all these amazing figures, like, for example, Ulysses S. Grant, where there was just absolutely no indication that Ulysses S. Grant was ever going to be somebody prominent until the moment that he had a chance to rise to, to some event. Um, he was born 1822, and, uh, you know, no one ever really respected him or looked up to him. And, you know, he was average throughout his whole life. Uh, he went to West Point, graduated middle of his class. He was a great horseman, but they decided to make him a quartermaster, and, you know, keep him as far away from the cavalry as possible. And he got kicked out of the army uh, for being a drunk. Uh, and then he was basically poor and destitute. And at the outbreak of uh, the Civil War, he was living off $800 a year. And just uh, four years later, he was general of the army, commanding a million men, and then uh, then became president and served for eight years there and did some really remarkable things. So I think it's less meaningful about where you came from, and it's more meaningful about when opportunities arrive in your life, what do you make of that chance? You get them. You know, you'll get statistically at least one or two, but usually more than that. And if you're real clever, you can put yourself into situations where you get a lot of them. But just because you have these things doesn't automatically mean you're going to succeed. Uh, you know, I, I know a, a lot of people, especially in the East Coast, that are descendants of prominent families like the Mellons and the Drexels and the Rockefellers. And what's really astounding is those are people who are put in the best of all possible situations. Imagine, you know, growing up knowing you have 14 trust funds and you automatically are going to get into the best schools in the world, and you automatically are gonna get all these amazing business contacts, and if you wanna go into politics, you can go into politics. If you wanna be a fashion designer, you can do that. No one's gonna say no to you. So on a silver platter, you're given orders of magnitude more opportunity than any of us could ever imagine having, and yet statistically, a lot of these people wash out. So uh, it is important, I'd say, to, to you know, put yourself through some adversity and struggle and to have a lot of ups and downs, a lot of lumps and bumps, and to recognize great opportunities and go do that. You know, I've had a very rocky path in the cryptocurrency space. I started out with the Bitcoin Education Project where I made no money at all and I gave my product away for free. It was, uh, you know, open source classes, Creative Commons classes, and then I started BitShares with Dan Larimer. That didn't work out so well for me. And, you know, I started Ethereum with Vitalik Buterin and a few others. And, you know, despite having a very meaningful and significant role, I, I, uh, I actually didn't make any money from Ethereum. I was entitled to 293,000 Ether. I gave it all away. I didn't take any of it. Uh, had I kept it at the all-time high, it would be worth over $300 million. So, you know, I'm a founder of Ethereum, and that's a great title, I guess, but financially it didn't do much for me. Uh, and, uh, and also the Ethereum community doesn't like me too much. They say pretty horrible things. So if I, ha I just stopped at my second venture and just left the space after Ethereum, uh, nobody would know who I was. And, you know, I would have only had sadness and scorn and, uh, and no success at all. But I kept going, and I started IOHK, and we went and built uh, something very meaningful, and I'd like to believe we've made a difference in this space. So I think the key to a good life is just deciding what you want and having the tenacity and the resilience to be able to 
go and chase it and endure the pain and the suffering to get there and never taking anything for granted and understanding when opportunities are there, taking advantage of those opportunities and going and running with them. You know, the other thing is you have to develop a very thick skin. You know, I get brutally criticized on a pretty regular basis, sometimes fairly, sometimes unfairly. Uh, but the problem with the way the world works now is that it's become very two-dimensional. What people do is they, they don't actually listen to what you're saying. They Instead, they will listen for trigger words, keywords, and then they'll take some minor thing in a two-hour rant, and then they'll take that, blow it up, and say that's who you are and what you're about. You're, you're, you're basically a, like a, a, a paper sketch. You're not a real person. You're a comic at that point. And then they say, well, this person's X because they said Y. Uh, for example, when I said to MetaMask, do you know who I am, right? Now there's memes floating all around. And, you know, for months I've been getting hammered about that. No one understands the context behind those comments or why they were made, where I was at when I made them and all these things going on. I probably sent out tens of thousands of tweets. I, you know, I, I communicate with people every day, 18 hours a day. Uh, I've worked with thousands of people in this entire space, but everybody now knows me because of one tweet and they know who I am because of one tweet, according to them, right? So you just can't let these things define you. You can't let people uh, decide who you are. Uh, only you get to do that. And um, you shouldn't look to your past to define who you are. You should look to the things you've built and the things you continue to do and the principles you have and uh, the people you work with and the projects you take on. I, and uh, the other, the last point about all of this is to know when to quit. Um, you know, there's probably no greater example of that than Bill Gates. And he, for his time in the tech industry, you know, he started Microsoft, I think it was 1976, and he, 64%, 36% with him and Paul Allen. And, he, you know, he grew it into this Leviathan, and by the end of the 90s, he was God. You know, he, like everybody had to plan their IT businesses around what Microsoft was doing. It was worth so much money and uh, you know the, the government had to get involved to try to destroy him because they were the only ones who could take him down he won he beat everybody uh, and then somewhere along the way he said you know i'm just not going to be the ceo anymore you know, there's more to life than dominating the it industry and he kind of ha handed over the reins to other people and uh, he went on and now he's doing significantly more meaningful work and probably will end up curing malaria and saving millions of lives and HIV and saving millions of lives as a consequence of that pivot. So yes, he could have stayed in and maybe Microsoft would have uh, been clever enough to get the search engine and there would be no Google or maybe they would have bought Facebook and they would have had that plank and their market cap would be twice as large and he'd have twice as much money. But all the good that he's done in the second part of his career would not be there. So knowing when to leave, like what Satoshi did or what Gates did, I think is the other side of the equation uh, and uh, probably just as meaningful as knowing when not to give up and uh, having those resilience parts.